If you're trying to break into the entertainment industry, you've probably heard of the term script coverage. At its core, script coverage is the summary and analysis of a script intended to provide a reader a general understanding of the script. In a place like Hollywood, where time is money, executives are constantly looking to shave time off their schedules to maximize their efficiency in finding the next big thing. One of the easiest ways to do this is through script coverage. There are not enough hours in the day to read every single script that is submitted to me. So much of my job is tracking new material and finding new material that I have to just send out a breadth of feelers and get things sent to me. And so then it's my job to be able to rely on smart interns to read everything as fast as possible and to give me a really good, concise breakdown of the script. Being able to write good script coverage is important not only to demonstrate your value to your company, but also as a great opportunity to see the inside of the entertainment industry as a creative. As a development intern, the majority of your day is spent doing coverage, but despite it being such a simple concept, a lot of times there really isn't a simple equation that you can plug a script into and get a clear coverage out of. But despite there not being that equation, I was able to have conversations with other interns and my supervisors and have come up with some guiding principles for myself that have helped me approach the process of script coverage. So whether you're here because you're applying to an internship or it's the night before your first day and you are quite stressed out, fear not. We've put together some of the best shared and most used pieces of advice from fellow interns and supervisors that have helped us approach the process of script coverage. And we hope that you can use them too. Much like Chira Imwe's believe in the Force in Star Wars, the time that you spend with the script should be steadfast and focused. As simple as it sounds, when you're given a pile of scripts, you may feel the urge to multitask, but I promise you, unless you're the Rain Man, you should probably just stick to one. Try to like get rid of distractions because if you break kind of like checking your phone, looking off, switching on and off in tabs, then I think it really breaks up the flow of the story and then you lose yourself and so it's hard to be objective about whether or not you did or didn't like something or is it just like I was that was just not in this world. For some people, taking notes as they read can really help expedite the process of writing the coverage. Instead of writing the summary and the commentary later on, keeping track of the key details and the general plot line and things that they liked helps them put that stuff together even before they finished reading. You don't want to waste time by having to reread the entire script again to remember what happened in the script because it, it takes up a lot of time and you want to do these as fast as possible. So I would write down um, notes of what you thought about the script uh, on like a separate document, um, such as major points that happened and specific thoughts and comments that you want to elaborate on further. And I'll be sure to take down all the names of the characters so that I remember um, where it's taking place, sort of what time it's taking place, if it's, a, if it's a historical piece maybe, sort of what major event the script or the story is sort of centering around. Just like keeping note of what is going on is generally helpful. For others, like myself, I enjoy reading the script in full before I take the time to think about it. I much rather stay in the world and be fully engaged than to kind of shift my attention between keeping track of my notes and being critical and also reading the script. You really want to let it sit with you for a while because you like letting it marinate a little bit because then you come up with like, all right, what really stayed in my brain? What did it? Regardless of how you choose to go about immersing yourself in the story, one thing is clear. Being intentional with your time with the script will pay off in the long run. If it's a genre that you're really well versed in, you're more likely to catch onto those plot holes or shortcomings in the character development and dialogue that take you out of the universe that the script has created. And if you find yourself having that difficulty connecting with it after being intentional about immersing with the story, that actually might be a doorway to help you find your reasons for why the story doesn't work. Sometimes you have an intuitive hunch about why something doesn't work, but you might not have that kind of right off the top of your head reason why the story doesn't work. And knowing that can help you reverse engineer a solution. On the other hand though, if you feel like you might not be connecting with a script because of an issue of genre or in a field that you don't understand, there are still some objective ways that you can approach the process of coverage. What's really helpful is for you to kind of like, as you're reading, just kind of think about 
what is actually happening in this? And if you just strip away and see it, is that interesting? Um, and I think that's what really helps because sometimes you're not like grabbed by the dialogue. You're not really grabbed by the scene description. So you can't get inside the mindset of what's being told. But if you kind of just think about it, about like what's actually going on in the script, then you can see, okay, is this a kind of interesting program that would work well? Script coverage is made so much easier when you take the time to find the comparison. Instead of having to describe the genre, tone, style, message from the ground up, you're relying on the fact that there are cultural references that the reader can understand and interpret and apply onto the script to do a lot of the work for you. When I have to communicate what I like about a script, I usually try to compare it to other stuff, like find similar stuff that might elicit the same kind of vibe. Comparing scripts can help you get a sense of the general landscape surrounding your work and evaluate whether it's worth producing in light of its similar predecessors. Using comparisons can also add a sort of democracy to the process of reading and understanding coverages. Previously, if someone was to say that a piece was too raunchy for them, that might not actually mean anything for the reader because the reader might have a higher tolerance to that sort of material. Instead, when you place it within a cultural background, say The Hangover, you can say that a piece is more raunchy than a hangover. That might give the reader a better understanding of where it sits and then evaluate it for themselves. Does this fit into our company's motto? Does this fit into our company's message? Does this fit into our company's brand? But before all else, what script coverages do is save time. After all, the description, a slice of life mockumentary series that follows a hodgepodge cast of parks and recreation department workers as they navigate their personality differences through otherwise stereotypical and mundane situations in a small Indiana town, whew, is simultaneously more verbose and less descriptive than say, The Office, but with a parks and recreation department in a small Indiana town. When a movie studio like employs you as an intern, they're saying that like you're the type of person who like is their audience basically. Like you are like the age and sort of demographic of the kind of person that would be watching their movies. And so it's important to be super opinionated, to like have opinions about movies, like know what movies you like, know what movies you don't like, um, have like read scripts to movies that you do like. So you have a baseline and to understand like the brand of the company that you're working for, like what kinds of movies they tend to like and to kind of take all of those things into account. Most audience members have a taste and as an intern and audience plus, you also have a taste as well. But the difference is that you have to be more expressive about it, more explicit about it and more articulate about it. So take the time to look at the tastes that you have, the movies and shows that you watch and try to explain why they work or don't work for you. You'll notice that in the process, you'll not only figure out your taste and in turn be able to place scripts within your taste, but you'll also just get generally better at articulating why a script works or doesn't work for you. As a bridge between audience and company, you also represent the latter, which means that taking the time to understand your company's brand and image to the best of your ability is a great way to show that you have a general willingness to look at a script not only in isolation, but within the context of what your company is trying to make. That being said, as an intern, you're not expected to know everything the company's brand entails. And there's a lot of inner workings that you're not aware of. So I worked at a company before this that was a horror company. But on the flip side, they also made and were attempting to make super highbrow stuff in the hopes for an Oscar. But you're not going to know the intricacies of that. You're not going to know that this person wants to win an Oscar that they're talking about in staff meetings, you're just going to know that they also make horror movies. So when it comes to you guys talking about brand or is it our vibe or is it our lane, I think summary and comments are the things you guys should really stick to. I will know from the summary whether it's in our brand. You don't have to tell me. Good brand alignment is a cherry on top. It's great if a good script has that, but it's not a deal breaker if it doesn't. Just as this imagery may resurface childhood memories of being flicked by a rubber band by a friend or yourself, it also speaks to the two fundamental aspects that great stories share, tension and relatability. Tension is that tangible sense of unresolved feelings or a general sense that there is an imbalance that exists within the universe of the script. As viewers, the establishment of tension is what keeps us watching. There's no reason for us to continue watching if we don't feel like there's something that needs to be resolved at the end. And as such, a bad script isn't able to properly establish that sort of tension. 
And another way of looking at it is that tension gives us the answer to why should I care? Inversely, a good script might be able to answer this tension with a adequate resolution, while a bad script that might actually do a great job establishing tension might not give enough of a robust resolution to the story that might leave readers wishing for more. If tension is what motivates the dialogue, the characters, and the plot in general, one of the easiest ways to get a sense of if the tension exists and whether we can relate to the tension is through character interactions. I've seen so many instances in scripts where characters kind of interact, but they don't seem to like really feel in emotionally invested in like the other. So I don't understand how the audience is supposed to be emotionally invested in them. Closely tied to tension is the sense of relatability a script has. Relatability is important because without it, tension can't be well connected to the viewers. Relatability is best manifested in characters that we can relate to whether they're multidimensional or whether they show facets of humanity that we as viewers can understand. Take for example, a character like Iron Man. Even though he exists in a fantasy superhero world outside of our own, his ability to acutely display human emotions and growth allows the supernatural situations that he deals with to feel relatable to us. On the flip side, poor stories intentionally or unintentionally enforce stereotypes and isms, such as racism, sexism, etc. Looking at dialogue, I tend to see if, you know, the script is relying too heavily on stereotypes a lot of the times. Like, typically if there are too many, like, tropey things in the script, I tend to not like it. In my experience this semester, a lot of the bad writing I've come across is just, like, blatantly sexist is how it comes across as bad. In fiction, tying these two aspects together is the ability for a script to suspend belief or convince us that there is a cohesive fictional world that exists outside of our own. Normally I go, like a general rule I try to follow is suspend belief for one overarching premise and then anything that kind of breaks that isn't within the realm of reason. While there isn't really a cookie cutter method to finding whether a script suspends belief or not, the general rule of thumb is that all actions and dialogue that exists within the script fits into the cohesive universe that this script has spelled out. If it feels like a character is saying things that aren't aligned to their personality or the world or the context that they're in, whether that be the genre or the tone or the setting, those are moments in which that suspension of belief is broken and you as a viewer feel distant from that world. We've now passed the halfway point and have covered a lot of things that actually have to do with the process of evaluating scripts. But the next three pieces of advice are more holistic. They look at the process of script coverage as a whole, and I feel like are really important to keep in mind as you do coverage. While this may vary from company to company and day to day, the general rule of thumb is that the faster you can do the coverage, the better. Now, this might hurt for some of my perfectionists out there to hear, but companies much rather prefer that you are able to go through more coverages than to be able to write one really perfect one. Competent and fast, I will take that over. Excellent and paste. Doing a script coverage should be less like a fridge raid at 2 p.m. and more like one at 2 a.m. You'll get what you need in both situations with similar results, but one is a lot faster and a lot more frantic. As a high school TA, I was often conditioned to give okay projects an A, but having gone to college and having been a development intern, I will say for certain that life is a lot less like participation medals and a lot more like bell curves. Not all projects get an A and not all scripts get developed. For that reason, we've named this section, okay is not good enough. If you're satisfied with that, then move ahead. But if you're not, stick around. Making a film or a television show is extremely expensive. Basically, you have to place a bet on something that you have no idea how it's going to work out. You want to place the bet on the best possible project. Picture this. As an intern, you are the first filter through which all scripts pass through. Your impressions of a script determine whether it makes it to the next level executive or assistant. This process continues to the top, where hopefully there are only one or two great scripts that producers consider worth actually developing. However, if you pass scripts that are just okay, that means that more scripts are given to your supervisor to look through, which means more work for them to do, which means them liking you less. 
At the end of the day, it's really important to remember that writing a great script is extremely difficult. And so the number of great scripts that you get are going to be vastly numbered by the number of terrible and okay scripts that exist out there. As much as we've discussed how script coverage benefits your production company, it's also important to discuss how it benefits you. You're giving them your script coverage and like your time and your reading and your effort. And what you get out of it is them knowing you and forming a relationship with you and saying like, oh, this person is somebody that I want to work with again. Or like this person has really good taste and they're very savvy. And so I want to like form a professional relationship with them. Coverage is a space to show who you are through writing. If you like the script, the coverage should be fun to read. You want to have a personality with it. You want to have the person reading it also like the script and hopefully make it become a project. The triangle of confidence, speed, and personality can separate you from the pack and make lasting impressions with your supervisors. Script coverage can often be seen as something that you can do very cut and dry, but adding just those little notes of humor and personality can go a really long way in being remembered by people in your office. Script coverage may begin at a development intern level, but it does not stop there. For lots of people who are in development, you will do different versions of script coverage for your whole career. And so it is actually skill building when you do it. So you don't have to look at it as like an insurmountable task. It is just practice for the rest of your job. Every script is an opportunity to refine your ability to articulate and advocate for scripts. Who knows, maybe soon you'll be the one who finds the next parasite. And when that moment comes, you'll want to be able to articulate and advocate to the best of your ability. If you've made it to the end, congratulations! You've just graduated from the school script coverage. Here's your online diploma. It might not be easy the first, second, or third time, but you got this. Some things just come with practice. I think that's what's cool about script coverage is that you get to kind of be a part of the actual process. You are like, you are a filter that scripts pass through, which is super important. Like you can stop a movie from being made or like push it into the next direction. And that's like something that's actually pretty serious. And you know, these writers, they like, it's their lives, man. Like it's, it's their, it's like they're, they've dedicated their lives to writing these scripts and like they, their babies are like in your hands. And that's like really cool. And I try to take it seriously.